Hello, and welcome to this video on vectors. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the definition of vectors and also how to work with them. So doing things like vector decomposition and vector addition. Now, to begin, we'll first talk about scalars. Whether you know this or not, scalars are actually things that you use every day. They are your everyday numbers, basically. What they are are quantities that are described just by one number. So they just have a magnitude. And for an example, suppose I draw this line. Well, that line has some length. Okay, and the length of that line is described just by a number, a certain amount of meters or centimeters in this case. So length is just a scalar. You could ask, what is the mass of this pen that I used to draw it? Or to answer, in some number of grams. So that's a scalar. You could ask, how long did it take to draw? Give you some number of seconds. That's also a scalar. So time is a scalar. And you might say, OK, how fast did the pen move while I was drawing that? So the speed of that pen is also a scalar. It's just some number. Okay? In contrast, to really drive the point home, vectors are like scalars. They have a magnitude. but have one other key thing that you need to specify in order to describe that vector, and that is a direction. So in order to make that thing into a vector, I've got to give it a direction, which I can do by making a little arrowhead. So now it's clearly pointing along that direction, and it's got a certain length. Okay. In order to actually specify that direction in a more general way than just saying, hey, look, it's that arrow, I might choose some reference direction and say that this thing makes an angle theta with respect to that direction. Okay. And that would be one way of specifying that direction. And then, for instance, if I was talking about the fact that I was here when I woke up this morning, and now I'm here recording this video in this recording studio, then that thing is actually describing my displacement vector. It's the change in my position. That's a perfect example of a vector. And then you might say, all right, well, if I take that displacement vector and I divide it by the time, then I'll get an average velocity vector. And lastly, if I then ask a question of more detail about my journey, was I speeding up or slowing down, well, then you'd be talking about the acceleration vector along that trip from my home into the studio. All right, so those are all examples of vectors. And there's quite a lot more. Most quantities in physics are described by vectors. And so that's why we need to really understand how to work with them. One of the most common things that we need to do to work with them is to decompose vectors. Now, for example, if I'm talking about this thing, which represents my displacement vector, I suppose I was giving that information to you so that you could also get from my house to, the recording, um, to this recording room. In that case, it might not be so useful for me to just give you a direction um, as an angle and this length, because most roads are oriented in an east, west, north, south kind of way. So if you just go diagonally, you'll be cutting through all kinds of buildings. That's not really the best way to try driving. So it might be better if I could tell you, go so much east, and then go so much north, and then you'll be there. OK, in order to do that, we need to decompose this vector into how much east as well as how much north. Now, in physics, of course, we don't really call them north, south, east, west. We normally just use Cartesian coordinates x and y. OK. So then, in order to decompose this vector and get at its components, which is to say the pieces of the vector that lie parallel to the various axes, what we really want to do is just imagine squashing this thing down onto the x-axis. And then we get this piece. And that's the projection of the vector onto the x-axis. That is its x component. So if I call this vector a, then this thing is the x component of a. And similarly, I can squash it down onto the y-axis, and I get the y-component. 
Now, I can certainly see graphically what that represents, but I don't really know the length of either of these sides at the moment. So in order to make sense of it all and put numbers to it, I need to go ahead and use this angle. And the reason is, if I think about this thing, I can move this side over here. That's clearly the same vector. It's got the same length, it's the same direction. So it doesn't matter that I've shifted it over to the side. And now I've got a nice triangle. And that triangle has a hypotenuse, which has a length of the original vector. It's got an opposite side, and it's got an adjacent side. Okay. Now, looking at this thing, I can write down that the x component of my vector is equal to this adjacent side. And to make sure that it's clear what I mean as distinct from a, the length of the vector a, I'm going to use our full notation. So the length of the vector a, I'll denote by that. So a of x, the component of vector x, uh, the x component of the vector a, is the side adjacent for the triangle, which, what are my beautiful trig rules? Wow, it's so Katoa. So it's just going to be the length of A times the cosine of this angle, theta. And similarly, AY, which is the opposite side, is the length of A times sine of theta. Okay. So now, I've given you a way to get from my house to the recording studio on the roads, which is a great um, um, benefit, but there's much more to why we want to be able to decompose things. And one of those reasons is we need to do it in order to add vectors, because more often than not, we're not going to be talking about one vector. For instance, especially if we're thinking about an acceleration vector, then we multiply our acceleration vector by some duration over which we actually accelerate, and we want to add that to the velocity vector to figure out what is our new velocity. So we need to know how to add vectors, and this is a vital part of that, as we'll see in a moment. So let's think about how do we add vectors. Well, first, let's think about it graphically. So suppose that I want to add this vector a to, or I want to add a vector b to that thing. I want to add some vector there, which I will call the vector b. What is a plus b? Well, graphically, all I do is I take my original vector, which is a, and I copy it. I don't do anything to it, I just copy it over. And then I take b, and I put its tail at the tip of a. So there's a, there's b, and this thing here is a plus b. Okay. That's great except I have no way of specifying at the moment what this angle is. If I'm looking for this angle phi, I don't know what that angle is in terms of things. I also don't know the length a plus b. Okay, so I, I'm graphically, I'm done with the problem. Mathematically, I'm unable to specify what's going on with that vector. So in order to do that mathematically, it's going to be a little bit more involved. And what I actually have to do is take the various components and add them. So I've already taken the components of the vector a. Vector b is easy. Vector bx is the length of b. And the y component is just 0, the way I've drawn it. So then I can say, all right. I can add the various components, so ax plus bx gives me the x component of the result, and that's just the length of a, which I will now just write as a, because it's not going to confuse me anymore with the adjacent side, because we're not talking about that triangle anymore, a cosine theta plus b, and then I'll write ay plus by, and that's just going to be a sine theta. 
All right. And then, if I want to know now what's going on, well, all of a sudden, I've got this side, and I've got this side, which means I'm now back into a normal triangle, a right-angled triangle, because I've got the y component here, the x component there, and I know how to work with that. I know that I can apply the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what the hypotenuse is, because the hypotenuse is just the sum of the squares of these guys. Right? You know that h squared is a squared plus b squared for the little triangle with h, a, and b as its sides. And you can use trigonometry, again, to determine this angle phi, because straight off, you already have the opposite side and the adjacent side, so you can use tangent to find what the angle is. Or you can say that the cosine is you know, adjacent on hypotenuse, after you've figured out the hypotenuse by using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so now the problem is actually done because we'll just write down that the result, um, result is a cosine theta plus b quantity squared plus a sine theta squared square rooted at some angle phi, which is equal to the inverse tangent of um, the opposite, so the y component, a sine theta on a cos theta plus b. All right. And so that's how we've added the vector and then reformed it into one single vector given the direction, and done everything we needed to. Okay, so that is how you work with vectors, everything you need to know in this short little video. I hope it's helpful.